Hi again, and welcome to session three of the Joint Wise Yoga program. Here's a review of session two in pictures. The big three we've been talking about is sitting equally on the pelvis and then moving well from there. Breathing laterally, including the back, is part of that rib cage. And then when we exhale, really letting those ribs down, letting those shoulders down. And then when we're standing, standing on the four corners of the feet, nice and equal. So here's the topics for this week. Some do's and don'ts of three more poses, especially how to stretch the hip flexor is going to be the main topic. We do so much sitting that our hips get tight in the front, and so we need to counter that. And then a type of breathing to reboot and refresh, and then we'll practice. The hip flexors are deep inside, you know, you can see that lumbar spine there, front of the lumbar spine and the front of the pelvis here, and deep inside, deep to the intestines, we have the psoas, and then the iliacus, these two big muscles, and then they go over the front of the pelvis, and then attach to the hips down here. So the short hip flexors is a major problem in the modern era. Too much sitting. The hip flexors can overstretch the back because they attach to the back. They can overarch the back. Because they're attached here, by the time the hip goes backwards, it's going to pull that spine forward. So you, you can see that a little more easily here, how the muscle goes in front of the pelvis and attaches to the hip. And so it can pull the spine forward. And when that spine gets pulled forward, it can put a strain into the back and overarch the back. And the abdominal muscles are what comes to the rescue. So let's have a look at the anatomy here. So you can see that lumbar spine and the psoas. How it attaches and then goes to the front of the pelvis. And since it attaches down here on the hip, it's going to be able to torsion that spine forward. And then of course our abdominals go from here to here and they keep that back from overarching. So when we stretch our hips backwards, it's important to keep this shortened here so that the back does not overarch because of the tight hip flexors. So they can definitely alter our posture as well. So this kind of posture deviation is very common. And because those hip flexors go from here to here, they can pull the spine that way. And so that's what happens when we sit. This, this part here is closer to this part here. And pretty soon when that gets tight, we stand up, but we're like that. But we don't want to be standing like that. So we arch our back or back backwards. So we need to stabilize those hips by using the abdominal muscles. I don't recommend this pose for most people, by the way. But you can see we need something here to keep that spine from overarching. So moving the pelvis backwards on the hip, this can be a little tricky to understand. The pelvis here will move backwards on that hip bone. So we typically think of the hip moving from down here, right? Say when we walk, right, our hips moving forward and backwards, but it's a very slippery joint. So we can also move the pelvis backwards on the hip joint. So this little video, I'm trying to demonstrate that with a model and you can see that pelvis moving backwards. So that's what we want to start our back bends with. We want to start there, and then that stretches the hip, stretches that, those hip flexor muscles that we're trying to get after here. So if we keep the abdominals together, and we start our back bend down here at the hip, that's going to pay off big time. So it's the abs that hold things together in the front so that we can initiate that motion in our hips first.
And what we don't want is to overarch the back like that, right? Get too much motion here right away. Start that motion down at the hips. The warrior one pose, or peace warrior, stretches those hips. You can see that muscle goes like this, that psoas, those hip flexor muscles goes like that. So we need to use our abs to stabilize so that we don't overarch our back. So here's stepping back to warrior one. So we go from standing pose through chair pose, right? Remember chair pose is very foundational for a yoga practice. So we're going to go from standing to chair pose and then step back towards warrior one. So I'm going to try to step backwards towards chair pose and then just let my foot go behind me. Nice. Let me play that again for you. Good. So we try to go through chair pose and just take that motion on back to extend the leg. And it's a good idea to start hang by hanging on to something and then that way you can really focus on the quality of the motion rather than the bounce. And of course, only bring your leg back as far as you feel comfortable doing. Because if you go try to go back as far as you can, your back is going to arch and it's not going to do what we want it to do at all. The abs to be able to stay in control. So the arms, the warrior one arm, so bend the elbows, then reach the arms up and forward rather than rounding the shoulders. So warrior one, with the arms at a slight angle, lengthening up through the body, making sure that the back's not overarching, stepping back only so far that it, it feels okay. So using momentum, using momentum is a really important thing for a healthy movement practice and our day-to-day -day activities. Say going up the stairs, sometimes I, I was working with, with a person the other day. Yeah, just by using momentum, it really helps to go up the stairs without pain. So let's use momentum in the pose. So reach back, do the pose. And then sink back to step forward to build some momentum. Other side. And notice the momentum coming out of the pose. So go backwards to help you go forward. Cobra pose. So another type of back bend that we got to watch out for overarching the back is cobra pose. So by the motion starting at the hips, it helps to get the belly off the ground right away. Obviously, uh, this guy is doing a cobra pose that most people can't do, <laughs> but we want to start it here, not here. This gentleman, you can see, he really needs to work on moving first at his, at his hips, and he has a lot of hip muscles here, right? It's going to make it harder for his hip to move, so he's going to have to be really conscious to move this part first so he doesn't overarch his back. So he's got to get that hip moving first, and keeping that belly off the ground. So here's a little demonstration of the motion that we're talking about. We want to let the pelvis move first, then let's roll the spine up. And I'm going to show you the difference between, say, how that last gentleman was moving and the first. That's what we don't want is to put that motion right into the back. Here's what we do want. We want to be able to roll that pelvis back, then flow the spine up. Low from the bottom up. Don't want to have it in the back. Low up. And follow with the spine. Line on the stomach to the elbows. 
and then the press up and then cobra pose. A lot of people need to start just lie, lying on the stomach, for example, then working their way up to the elbows and finally start working on the pose. So we have to be patient. And he, so here's a guy that I mean, uh, prone on elbows or just laying on his stomach on his elbows and just need to work on not having the belly button on the floor unless you got a big belly and wouldn't be able to help it. So. So how's she doing? I think she's doing great. I, this is a really a nice modification, by the way. If we put the hands forward, that can that can help. And so she's not overarching her back. Her hips have definitely participated. If she has any neck problems, it might be too much looking up on her neck. If, if she let her eyes down a little bit, that might be good. But if she's got a supple neck, it all looks pretty good to me. I hope I can do that at her age. Our last pose is bridge pose. So again, with bridge pose, we're opening up the hip flexors in the front. So we want the glutes working and the abs in control to help stretch those hip flexors. A very, very helpful pose. We teach this to people in physical therapy all the time. For hip and back problems, it's very, very common. So you want to use the glutes first, not the back. You want the abs to keep control. We don't want to grip those abs, but we don't want to let the back arch. And using the heels can help the glutes kick in first. So if you think of the heels, so we're using the four corners of the feet, but you know, keep your feet on the ground. A little bit more into the heels can help the, the glutes or buttock muscles do their job and really help to stretch those hip flexors. So those are the directions that we want to go. We want that pelvis rocking this way. And then you finish that motion by thinking up and forward. And that really helps those hips finish that motion. So we think up, but also up towards the head a little bit. And that really helps your hips complete the motion. Of course, if you can't go that high, that's fine. Just start gradually working on it. And the type of breathing we want to work on this week is somewhat similar to what we've been doing already, except it's kind of a way to refresh or, or reboot. So what we do is we're just going to count to four and, and inhale on the count of four. And then when we exhale, we want to exhale four, three, two, one. So we count four backwards. So we inhale one, two, three, four, and then exhale four four, three, two, one. So let's go ahead and do that a few times together, if you would, with me. So inhale, feel the ribs go out to the side, include the back. Four, and then four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Let's do two more. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. And you can do it four times. For week three practice. We want to try some back bends, trying to get the hip to move first and the buttocks goes down and the abs stay in control. So you get that motion that starts in the hip rather than the back. Very, very important. Now we're going to do warrior one pose and then practice back bends, cobra pose, whatever level is appropriate for you. And then bridge. Oh boy, what a great pose. So try to work on bridge. Even if you're doing it in bed, you don't have to get down to the floor. The floor is great, great place to do it. Even in a bed, it's worth practicing. And finally, that four by four breathing method to reboot or refresh. Give it a try. All right, very good.
Hi again. Let's prepare to practice together for session three. In this session, we worked on lengthening the psoas muscle, that, that hip flexor that tends to get tight with so much sitting. So it's really important to do some sort of kind of back bend or hip opening type movements together. So we're gonna practice uh, the back bend, you know, starting at the hip first, and then we're gonna do warrior one, and then we're gonna do our cobra pose, followed by bridge. And all of these really help to open up the hips and counter the sitting that we tend to do in modern in the modern world. <laughs> and then we'll also think about our breathing pattern, right, which is a, a kind of a four by four sort of rebooting breathing pattern to help us this week to regroup when we feel ourselves getting a little out of out of sorts. So let's begin. Let's do back bend first. And remember, we want to start at the hips. And for our practice, you may want to have a chair around or a piece of furniture or a wall close by when you practice. To begin, let's feel how you might start that motion down in the hips rather than starting the motion in your back. So see if you can feel that difference. So let your head and your torso be forward a little bit. And then see if you can feel where that hinge point is, which is in the hip. So find that hinge. And then we're going to progress from there. So you find that hinge and then start to flow backwards. And notice you should feel the abdominal muscles kind of kicking in automatically when you do it that way. And so would this be an inhale or an exhale? Really in this it doesn't matter a whole lot, but in general it's thought of, you know, back bends, it's a good idea to inhale. But when you do back bend here, you really gotta be careful that you're not inhaling into your chest. Right, so think of inhaling maybe low into your back to support your back. So you can inhale as you go back, breathing low, and exhale out of it. Let's do two more. Nice. Let's do warrior pose. So with warrior pose, remember that the, the big deal is to feel how to butt down so that we get a nice stretch through the hips. Again, we don't want to practice moving like this, right? So when we move and when we transition, we're trying to feel how to let the butt stay down so we keep the stretch on the, on the hip flexor and work on good body mechanics. So you might want to have a chair by or something to touch. I recommend that because then you can really focus on the wall and get your movement a little easier. So, and then when we go to warrior one, we're gonna reach back past chair pose. So reach back past chair pose. To your warrior one stretch. Make sure it's your version where you feel like you're not arching your back, the buttocks is down, you feel the glutes maybe working. And you're nice and balanced, you're not overdoing it. And then if you feel comfortable, you can add your arms or just one arm to the pose and smile. Very good. And then to come out of the pose, shift backwards a little bit and then come forward like you did getting out of the chair. Let's reach back to chair pose to the other side. Nice and neutral, feel the butt down, feel the, the glutes working, especially, you know, on the, the side where the leg is forward, feel that side working. Nice lateral breathing, not overstressed the shoulders, right? You can add the arms if it's right for you. Good. And then shift back a little bit and step forward. 
for cobra pose, we want to come down and do your version of cobra. So whatever feels okay for you, but we want to start by letting the butt come down just as we did in our other movements. And we want to come up just only so high that it feels okay on you. If you keep your eyes looking down, that can really help keep the motion from being too much into your neck or too much into your back. So feel how to flow, let the butt down, flow up only so far that it feels okay for you. And then you can inhale low and exhale. Now, if this is too much for you, you can adjust that according to how it feels. So stay within what feels okay for you. A couple of modifications are, you could work your way up to your elbows, right? Or you can also just have your hands there and try to press up from there. That can also make it a little more comfortable. All right, very good. Hey, let's transition, work your way back over. We're gonna do bridge. So to do bridge pose, you wanna start the motion down here and think about, you know, having your feet at a, at a comfortable distance. You might need to experiment with what, what position works for you. If you get your legs out too far, it tends to trigger the hamstrings and you might get cramps, right? So find a position a little bit closer to the buttocks, but not straining to do so. And then flow on up and flow down. Show you my back there. Yeah. So flow on up and flow down. Again, this type of back bend, like standing back bend, doesn't matter a whole lot which uh, you're doing an inhale or an exhale. So you may want to do an inhale here and exhale down. Very good. If you get a cramp, just try to stretch it out and try again. And a couple of things you can do is you can try to think of your quads working a little more. You can think of activating the buttocks first. Activate the buttocks first. So that you don't strain it, you know, in, into your back. So, very good. Thank you. When feeling stressed, try 4 by 4 breathing. Counting backwards helps release the mind from worries. Inhale, 1, 2, 3, 4. Exhale, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. And let's do it one more time for practice. Great for stress relief. Two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, Two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, and one.